but it rips it hard out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and the and most ruthless captain there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. I'm the best ever. Joining me today on the sit down is one half of Martinez, BJJ. Jesus Chavo Martinez. How are you, sir? Pretty good, man. Thanks for having me on your show, man. No problem. Now, you guys just opened up a new school right on Cotman Ave, just off of the 66 for people that don't drive. Uh, Cotman and Frankfurt. It's just a half a block off Frankfurt Ave. You got double the mat space. You got the same awesome instructor team. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the move, why you did it? Uh, the move was because, um, you know, when we started, we started a little small because we didn't want to get too crazy. Um, so, you know, we, st we was at a Taekwondo school sharing space with one of the guys that we first started with. So um, we was limited the space there. So we ran into the building that we first started at. It was on Rhine Street. You know, it was the perfect opportunity. The, um, the landlord worked with us, gave us a good deal on it. So, you know, we said, you know what? We might as well jump in there. It's a good opportunity. And then uh, we... Jumped in there the first couple of weeks, months, you know, it was a little difficult because we didn't have the clientele that we wanted. But, you know, little by little, uh, it started growing and growing and growing. And um, we outgrew that space. We doubled the mat space, like you said. You know, we got a bigger locker room, showers. You know, our facility now, it's, it's top notch, you know. Um, so, you know, God has blessed us in, in many ways. Nice bathroom, too. I took a piss in there last week and it was like I was in the Hilton. Beautiful bathroom, bro. Yeah, that's one thing we have, man. We're, 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 we're pretty clean. We we're pretty anal about that. You know, our mats are always clean. We have people walk into our gym and say, is this the gym? It smells too good. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're pretty clean about that. You know, we're pretty anal about that. You know, we clean our mats maybe three, four times a week. You know, our equipment, if equipment's left over, we tell our guys you have two days to get it. If not, it's going in the trash. We don't play around with that, you know? Nice. You also have some very high level instructors at your gym. Your brother Will, uh, now a BJJ black belt under Master Carlos Machado. You're a brown belt under Carlos Machado, am I right? Yes. Zach Makovsky, uh, he's 15 and 4. He's a pro. Everyone knows about Zach. Uh, former Bellator champion. Uh, you got Steve McCabe. He's another veteran. He's tough as nails with a ton of experience. How did you end up with this much talent around you? We started with the Fight Factory, you know, when we started doing our MMA and um, with Eddie Alvarez and, um, you know, Steve and Zach and Steve Hegg. You know, Steve Hegg is one of the pioneers in Philly with MMA, you know, so we wanted to up our level as amateurs and um, we joined the Fight Factory, you know, and um, our level, a level of uh, MMA just skyrocketed, you know, and then um, we we opened up, uh, well, my brother split ways, he, he ended up going uh, to another school, I don't want to mention no names because it's still a sensitive subject around, you know. And um, that that ended up breaking off. So that's when we, we got the ability to open up our own gym. And whatever happened, I have no idea what happened with the Fight Factory. It ended up um, closing down. So all those guys ended up jumping ship with us because, um, you know, we were all training partners all along through that. You know, we helped Steve, Steve helped me, Zach helped my brother, my brother helped Zach. So all along we had that, you know, we had that team. We were still a team no matter, even though it was Fight Factory and Martinez BJJ, we were always united training, you know, helping each other for this, sharing each other's knowledges. You know, we'll go down to the Fight Factory to spar, Steve and the guys would come up to spar, you know, and um, so they joined our team, man. And, um, you know, uh, Steve came over first, Steve McCabe came over first and, um, man, a lot of people judge Steve, judge Steve because of his record, but they don't know the knowledge and the, and, the, and, and the talent that dude has, man. That dude's first couple fights, he, he fought Frankie Edgar. Did he fight Frank, Frankie Edgar? He fought Frankie Edgar, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> his, uh, his second fight. He fought Frankie Edgar the day of. His opponent, something happened with his opponent. They walked up to Steve and said, hey, listen, we have this, this guy that's a wrestler. And Steve said, you know what, I'll take it, you know? Steve's a small guy, and um, his first, I want to say like his first five or six, maybe seven fights were at 170. Wow. So he would walk into the cage at 165 and fighting guys maybe 180, you know, and um, the dude has heart for days, man, and uh, he's come under us, man, and, you know, he's under a couple wins now. He's riding a big high momentum, and, um, and I love that dude, man, you know, and the knowledge of just, just MMA knowledge, that dude is, is amazing. You know, and uh, talking about Zach, Zach's a great guy, man. You know, you want to talk about... A division one wrestler man that that knows knowledge that dude's right there man i've been picking his brain a lot wrestling even his jujitsu man he's a blue belt but man his knowledge his his just the skill level overall it's it's amazing you know and um uh, man he's still young he's uh if i'm not mistaken i just think he turns 30. you know and um he just won that cage for you know dominant performance dominant performance you know he's supposed to fight for uh cage for 125 belt i don't have no doubt in my mind that he's going to bring that home you know, and, and our amateurs as well, you know, we breed some of our amateurs from nothing up. We got Matt Ibison, 
that's one of the top 145 amateurs yeah he's a 155 dude. amateurs in, in philly that kid you know he his career when he first started you know he fought some tough fights you know he uh, he lost a couple fights in a row but he got back on his horse man he's unstoppable now all right now we're going to get into a young jesus martinez growing up uh what neighborhood did you grow up at where are you from uh grew up in uh, north philly like recent canberra front allegheny you know, around there, it's uh, it's called the Badlands. So, what was a uh, what was a 16, 17 year old Jesus Martinez like growing up? Uh, man, it was it was pretty tough. You know, um, just overall, just violence. You know, gunshots and just day in and day out, seeing people get robbed and fights day in and day out. You know, um, growing up, me and my brother were always playing baseball, so that kind of kept us out of the loop. You know, of being in trouble. You know, our, we had great parents. My dad was always strict with us. You know, and um, he had to bust his behind to give us everything we needed. We didn't have much, but we had everything we needed to survive. You know, so like I said, you know, going to high school and um, through middle school, you know, um, it was really tough. You know, it was it was basically you, you have to survive, man. You go to school, you get picked on. You know, you get picked on, you, you you're gonna get picked on day in and day out. You know, so that's one thing my dad always told us: don't allow no one to pick on you. You know, fight back, but don't be a bully. So day in and day out, man, it was it was a battle, fighting, arguing. You know, staying away from all the all the drugs and all the violence. You know, I don't seen people get stabbed, people get shot, people get hit by cars. You know, people get rolled on with bats and, and guns and knives. I've seen all of it. Were you and Will always tight growing up? Yeah, yeah. We we we. You know, our dad made us that way. You know, our dad always told us family is all we have, man. And um, you know, growing up, we we. It was it was always the five of us: me, my mom, my dad, my little sister, and and my brother. You know, so. It was always just us two, man. You know, we, we, he was always two grades higher than me, but he would always check up on me, make sure I was fine. We always knew pe different people, so he always had people checking up on me. You know, I had people, you know, checking up on him, make sure everything everything was fine. And then uh, when we got into high school, we was in high school together. And, um, you know, we it was just, there was no click. It was just Will Martinez and Jesus Martinez. You know, we won't hang outside of that. We would always look out for each other. You know, make sure we're fine. Make sure we have everything we needed to survive. Where'd you go to high school? Uh, Edison Ferreira High School. It was on Luzerne Avenue. Okay. What did, what did you get into after high school? Did you immediately start working or did you do some uh, badass neighborhood shit? No, you know, as um, soon as I got out of well, my brother through high school, he was working, you know, um, my last two years. Well, his last year, he was working and um, he was working and going to school. You know, he took care of me, you know, he put me through my prom and just bought me gear, you know, just had me looking good, expensive clothes. You know, man, so he took care of me through my last year, you know, and I'm um, getting out of high school. You know, I got a, just a regular job, you know, um, I wanted to, to go to school, but I, was, I really wasn't into it. So he got me a job where he was working at Cardone Industries. You know, he had a pretty high position there making really good money. And, um, Over on Whitaker Ave? Yes, right off of Whitaker Ave. I had a shitty job delivering auto parts. I used to go in there. You guys used to ride around the mall cop scooters? Yeah, and yeah, 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 the forklifts and the little mall cop cars. <laughs> so um, how did you find the martial arts? It was funny that you say that, man, because uh, like I said, all growing up, we were all about sports and stuff. And um, we used to lift, we, we used to go to the gym. You know, I used to be at the gym all the time, lifting weights and, you know, being a big guy and big muscles and big stuff like that. But um, a friend of mine, OT, was was doing jujitsu. And uh, we seen that he was in good shape. And my brother asked him, hey, what are you doing, man? What, what type of cardio are you doing, man? You getting, you know, you getting skinnier, you getting ripped up. And uh, he said, well, I'm doing jujitsu with this guy right here on Fifth Street, he's called Lonnie Phillips. So my brother went to check it out, and when he came home, he was like, dude, you gotta check this out, man. You gotta check this out. But at the time, you know, I checked it out. I did it a couple times, but I really wasn't into it, man. You know, and then one day I said, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try this. I wanna get in good shape. So I started doing that, man, and one thing led to another, man. And um, I ended up in a cage. Were you watching the UFC back then? Like, did you know what mixed martial arts was? It's funny that you say that because um, the first time that, uh, I watched one of the UFC was when, when Gracie fought and um, my dad had a chip box back in the day. Yeah, the chip boxes back <laughs> in the day and um, we were in his room watching this man and we would see all, the, all these guys beating each other up and it was like, wow, man, this is nuts, man. And um, we were just talking about it, but not, never I imagined me doing it. How were you with your hands back in the day? You getting uh, any street fights? Yeah, I got into a couple of street fights, man. You know, it was just, and it was just for the fittest, whether it took me to knock him out or throw him on the ground and whatever it took to survive, man, you know, and um, that's what it was about in the streets, man. It's not who's got the best hands or who's got the better groundwork in the street. It's who can survive, you know? Right. Because the street fight is not, there's no referee there. There is no one to stop it, you know, it's, it's to the fittest. Absolutely. 
So um, when did you decide that you actually wanted to get in a cage and fight? Was it before you even started jiu-jitsu? No, I was doing jiu-jitsu and um, I was a blue belt at the time. I just had came back from injury. I had, um, I was playing football and I, and I hurt my ACL, so I took some time off. And then my brother comes back and says, yo, I'm going to do an MMA fight. I said, what? He said, yeah, I'm going to do a cage fight. I said, you serious, man? He said, yeah. So, you know, that's when I just had, first got back into the gym. And, you know, like I said, I was lifting. I was still lifting, you know, but my knee was feeling good. So I got back in the gym. And through his whole training camp, I was helping him. I was running with him. I was doing all his strength and conditioning with him. You know, I was doing everything with him, man. And, um, you know, it encouraged me. I said, wow, man, if I can go through a whole training camp with my brother, maybe I should give this a try. Right. You know, and um, he fought. I wouldn't, if I'm not mistaken, it was like, uh, I want to say July or August. He fought. And then um, I was like, wow, I'm definitely going to do this, man. I got to do this. You know. What was that like, Will's first MMA fight? You're, you're listening to him say he wants to do it. You show up at the event. I know uh, the first time I watched the cage fight live, just walking in the door and seeing that big cage right in the center, center of the arena and all the chairs set up and just knowing that this many people were going to be watching these two guys fight tonight. And you could get embarrassed. You could look like the man knocking somebody out. It could go any type of way. What was that like when you walked in and you knew your brother was going to be getting in that cage for the first time? It wasn't... It was not saying I was afraid, but you know, as my brother in there, we used to growing up fighting, and I was always there. So now knowing that he's in the cage alone, not saying that he couldn't handle himself, you know, and it was just like it was it was a weird feeling. It was you know, it was excitement, but like wow, you know what I mean? It was excitement, but wow, excitement, but wow, you know, it's like uh, you know when you're on a roller coaster, you know, highs, lows, highs, lows, and uh, you know, I amateur days were rough, man. Like we would walk into the venue, it wasn't even a venue, it was a uh, gym, and um, the cage would be set up in the middle. Ed Sue will call you and say, listen, um, I got to fight for you. Okay. He won't even know who you fight until you get to the venue. <laughs> you know, that happened to my brother like two or three times, man. The only opponent I knew that I was fighting was Kashim Peterson. Patterson, I'm sorry. And uh, that was my third fight. That was the only opponent I knew that I was fighting. And until then, we'll walk into the venue. We'll weigh in. You're 185. You're 185. You're 155. Okay, we'll match you guys up. <laughs> no experience. And everything was ground and pound. I like the rules they have now. That was you know, some uh, underground shit? Or yeah, you basically serve? say it was underground. You know, we didn't need no physicals. We didn't need nothing. We show up, get our hands wrapped. Wow. And, you know, let's go fight. So you didn't know what the hell was waiting in that other dressing room no, for you? No, I really didn't. That's really, crazy. We, they, not like now, if you call me, like, hey, you want to fight? Of course. Well, we have such and such. You can go on YouTube, <laughs> look this guy up, study him. Back in the day, it wasn't. You'll show up. The cage will be there. Your locker room will be there. They'll have water for you. And that's it. So I checked out your uh, your fight record on uh, sure Dog. Your record lists your first Ami fight. You only had one Ami fight, right? No, I had a uh, five. Five. I was four and one. Sure Dog has you listed as one Ami fight, uh, a TKO loss to Charlie Joseph by forfeit. Was Charlie that scary that you didn't even want to? Man, that, get dude, the game? that dude's a clown, man. <laughs> What's the story behind that? Oh uh, man, that dude's a clown, man. You know, um, he calls me out. We fought at the time I was a champ at 185. You know, and um, this, this dude just running his mouth everywhere. And um, I said, if he wants to fight, man, we can fight. Whatever, man. I've never backed down from a fight. And um, this dude was, man. I want to talk about a clown, man. And um, so yeah, he um, we got in a fight. I was beating him up pretty bad. We got into a scramble, and uh, the only thing that wasn't legal when we did amateurs were elbows. He hit me with an elbow and split me open. And um, I was still fighting. You know, got up, the referee stopped. The, well, not the referee, the, the medic stopped the fight. And, um, you know, he won. Yeah, that's fine with me. But, you know, then he went around just still talking smack and trash and whatever. I said, whatever. So when I was turning pro, they asked him to fight me. He said, no. My third <laughs> pro fight, they asked him to fight me. He said, no. My fourth fight, they asked him to fight me. He said, no. So, and Mr. Charlie Joseph, Mr. Fight Monkey, <laughs> whatever you want to call yourself. If you're still in the MMA business, my man, come visit me. <laughs> so uh, you conclude your amateur career. You decide you want to turn pro. Uh, you win your first five fights. How high are you on life at that point as an undefeated professional? It seems like nothing can touch you in a cage. Yeah, man, that's how I felt. I'm not even going to lie, man. You know, uh, I did uh, four local shows, and then um, I got called by King of the Cage. I fought at the Foxwoods, man. I, Chip was a great dude, man. And, um, you know, I, I put a, a pretty good show on. And, um, you know, I was high, man. I was I was high on life right now. You know, nothing can be stopped. They called me to fight Doug Gordon, which the dude had, like, he was, like, 23 fights in. I only had five, you know. Um, I took the fight, man. It was, it was pretty bad because I was going through a tough time in my marriage at the time. And no excuses, you know. And um, I took the fight. I said, let's do it, you know. 
Um, I was having trouble cut weight, I was sick. Like everything that could have went wrong, went wrong. You know, I get to the venue, he misses weight by five or six pounds, you know, and I'm sitting here like, all right, whatever, man. So I told him, look, cut, cut as much as you can, we'll still fight. So he went and, and cut, I said, you know what, I'll take the fight, I was arrogant. You know, I'm coming off all these fights, all these knockouts, you know what, man, this is, whatever. Let's take the fight. So I took the fight after my dad telling me not to. You know, and I don't I don't ever override my dad. And that dad I overrode with my dad. I said, Pop, don't worry about it. We got this. He said, Child, were you sure? I said, Pop, don't worry about it. We got this. He said, That's not a smart move, man. Just take your way in money and let's go. No, let's do it. Okay, no problem. Did it. We get to the to the venue that day. You know what I mean? He doesn't have his paperwork. The fight almost ain't happened. He found his paperwork, whatever. We get to the back that day. Uh, the commission comes up to us with our drug test. He doesn't want to take the P test. You know what I mean? Uh, the commission comes up to me with, with a contract saying, what contract did you sign? I said, I'll, I'll sign three five minute rounds. Well, his contract says three three minute rounds. I said, this is for a title, like what's going on? So everything, everything that could have went wrong, I walked into the cage not knowing how many rounds I was gonna fight, how many minutes with the, where, where the round's gonna be. When and the bell rang, you didn't know if you were about no, to fight a three or five minute round? No, I didn't. I was just in that's there, I said, outrageous. you know what? I train as hard as I can, so it is what it is, let's go fight. When the bell rings, it rings. Yeah, that's it. So I went in, uh, he hit me with a big punch. He broke my nose, you know, um, I lost the fight. I had to go get no reconstruction, no surgery. You know, then I get a call about a month later that um, his PP, his uh, his uh, drug test came back positive. Oh really? For so whatever it was, they couldn't discuss it. But I'm still working on, on that getting that lost off my record. You know, it's just a lot that goes through it. You know, so I'm still working on that getting that loss off my record. Now you've worked your way up to eight and three, which is your current record. Out of those eleven fights, what was your best moment in the cage? My best moment in the cage. I think they're all, man. I think all, all my moments are good in the cage, you know, because that's it's what I love to do, man. You know, um, but one thing I do take, I'm eight and three, man, but to me, I'm not eight and three. You know, I got caught with a big punch. He got caught on whatever supplements he was. Uh, Carl Amasu was the biggest fight of my career, man, and like I said, man, no excuses. He beat me. But, you know, I was going through the darkest time of my life ever there. You know, that fight, it's like, it's a blur. You ever have a dream? but you can't remember that dream because it's a blur. Right. That's that fight, that's what that fight is to me. Same thing with the uh, Lasan fight. You know, I went in there, put him down. He came back, he needed me in my groin, put me down. You know, I have the video on my phone. I'm trying to protest that, but at the end of the day, you know, a loss is a loss. I'm glad that those two losses happened back to back because, you know, um, that made me take a step back and realize what really was going on in my life because I love to fight, I love to train, I love to do anything and that, I didn't have the desire that I had before. You know, I was I was fighting just to get my mind off of what was going on in my life. Right. So steroids and dick shots take them out of the uh, out of the fray, and you might be undefeated right now. <laughs> yeah, basically, man. No excuses. You know, like I said, uh, I'm glad those fights happened. You know, people look at those fights, but oh, he he lost to Car Amasu. You know, and 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 they posterized me on MTV. You know, because they only showed the last maybe 25 seconds of that. But right. go into YouTube and watch the first minute and a half of that fight. Let's talk about that. I know you're a fighter and you guys are, are, are fearless or allegedly fearless. When you fight Carl Amasu, you're not fighting like, like Zach. I seen Zach last week. Zach looks like a nice, friendly dude. He'll, he'll beat you senseless in a cage, but he looks like a friendly dude at least. Uh, he don't have the Wanderlei Silva stare down. Carl's a fucking scary, like Halloween looking dude. Yeah. He stares through your soul, and then you get in there and he's a striker. He's got a great ground game. Like, that's a ballsy move to even take a fight with this guy. I took that fight in three and a half weeks' notice. I cut, no excuse, <laughs> I cut 35 pounds. You know, and, um, and I fear no one, man. I fear no one. What happened with that? I heard you say the cage was bigger than you thought it was going no, to be. No, it was funny that uh, we were talking about that the day you were doing our, our thing at the school. Uh, that was the first time I fought in a humongous cage like that. And, um, you know, and uh, we were talking about that because uh, when my brother fought for Bellator the first time, I told him, be careful because the cage is so big that your distance, you're judging your distance is going to be a little hard. Right. And uh, when I fought Carl Amasu, I thought, you know, I threw a couple punches we were in. And he threw like a spinning back kick, this weird kick, and it like landed and hit me like in my lip. And I thought I cleared the distance, but in reality, I didn't. So, you know, I was just giving my brother a heads up about that. It's the first time he fought for Bellator. And uh, it's funny you bring that up because we were talking about that the other day when you were at the, at the gym doing You want that fight again, right? Yes, I do. I sure will take that fight again, man. Nothing against Carl, but, you know, um, I would love to fight him again, man. Me and him trained before after that, and we talked before. And, you know, even when he was in the tournament, man, he I was rooting for him, man. I was rooting for him. I was happy for him. You yeah, know, but if, if I can have that fight again, man, I'll take it all over again, man. And he knows it's all business. You know, he knows there's no disrespect. So, 
you know, and I, and I know he'll be able to fight me again because, man, like I said, we talked and he knew that I was better than what I performed the day we fought. Right. Yeah, you and Carl are, are uh, two guys that uh, always go out there for a knockout or a finish. So um, you put two guys like that together in a cage. You can't, I mean, if we see it 10 times in a row, it's never going to get old. So before Martinez BJJ ever existed, you trained at uh, Semper Fi. Yes. There was a blowout there, and uh, you and Will created Martinez BJJ. Very successful school. You guys are doing great. That place is always packed now. Uh, let me get in your business now. Uh, what happened that caused you to go off on your own? Well, it ain't, nothing happened to me. I was never partners. I was just a student there and just training there. Whatever happened between Julio Rosario and my brother, you know, that's up to them. I don't want to air that out because it's none of my business. But I can say is look at our resume to their resume, where we come and where we at to where they're at. Okay. You know, so look at the, col the caliber fighters we have and the caliber training we have to the caliber stage to where our fighters are fighting to where they at. So whatever happened between them two, I never got in the middle of it. You know, I've done going out and seen them and, you know, they got me kicked out of a bar one time, you know, when I used to go out just because they thought that I was going to do something and like I was over all of that, you know. One thing about me and my brother, you know, we have issues with someone, we allow you to deal with that. It's like me and you have problems, me and you deal with that. I don't get involved with that. That's why we're grown men. Right. You know, you deal with that issue. Unless it's, they're threatening him or family's involved, then it's different, you know. So I never got in the middle of my brother and whatever happened with Semper Fi. No, I never got in the middle of that. You know, that was between them. You and Julio go back though, right? Before uh, you guys no, had I, your... the first time I met Julio was through my brother. My brother started training me with, uh, okay. with Sam, if I'm not mistaken, his brother. And, um, you know, I started training with them, but I never knew Julio. Julio was from, like, New York somewhere. I don't know. So my brother started training with Sam. He met Julio. And that's how they linked up. So do you look at the split as a blessing in disguise? Yeah. Oh, man, a blessing is not the word, man. <laughs> you know, like I said, man, uh, it's beyond a blessing, man. I thank God for it because, you know, we, we were able to open up our own doors and do our own thing and show people, you know, what we can do. You know, being new to the sport. Because we were. Nobody knew who we were. Who the Martinez brothers? Who the two crazy Puerto Rican kids? Right. You know, nobody knew who we were. You know, and um, now you say Martinez, BJJ, people are like, yeah, we know those dudes. You know, we know them. You yep. know what I'm saying? So You guys got a brand. I talked to Julio uh, not too long ago, and he was saying that, you know, he's happy for your guys' success. He has his thing. Any chance you guys ever reconciling? It's not up to me, man. You know, like I said, I'm not bitter. I'm not, I don't hold anger. Don't talk bad about people, you know, but man, but he knows what he did. You know, he knows where we're at. That's all I can say, you know. I don't have no bitterness towards him. And to be honest, I can care less what he does or what he's doing. You know, like I said, our gym will speak for itself. You know, look at the product we put out. You know, and that's all I have to say. Our product, we believe in our product. We know, people know us. Let's put it that way. Uh, Brazen MMA's chief is Jason Sargas. Uh, is your beef with Jason real, or is it just uh, bad blood or a little bit of smack talk? First of all, who's Jason? I don't even know who that dude is. I've heard of Brazen, but I've never heard of no Sargas. You know, I've heard of Brazen because of the that, the tough fighters they have, but Jason Sargas, I don't know who that dude is, man. Like, um, I've heard things of him talking and saying stuff, man, but beef? I don't believe in beef, man. I don't have beef with no one, man. I'm at peace in my life, but people want to go around saying this and saying that, hey, that's fine. You know what I mean? To me, I don't feed into it. You know, like I said, man, I heard he did an interview, was talking about me and my brother, whatever it was, but hey, listen, man, if that's what you want to do, go right ahead, my man. At the end of the day, man, I know what I'm capable of doing, and, you know, I love to fight, and that's what I do, so. In this sport, all I say is, man, you got to earn your stripes, man. You know, you got to earn. It's like getting in the gang, you know, you got you to gotta initially earn your scars. You got to do things. This is how it is, man. You got to put your blood, sweat, and tears in the gym and in the cage, man. But like I said, bitterness, bitterness don't live in me, man. Being mad don't live in me neither. You know, if he wants to sit there and talk, I don't even know who this dude is. I can care less who he is, you know. He's running a successful gym. Hey, I'm happy for him, man. I'm glad, you know what I'm saying? But don't go around talking, you know what I mean? From what I'm hearing, he only has two amateur fights, you know. But like I said, I don't know who he is. I can care less. You know, if he's running a, a good gym, then that's fine with me. I wish him nothing but the best. Without giving up your game plan, uh, what would you change if you fought Amasu again? I wouldn't. I would change my mindset. My, the, 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 not even my mindset. It was just what I was going through in life, you know. At the time, I was, like I said, I was in a real dark place. And we don't get into that. But, you know, just knowing where I was then to where I'm at now, I'm 
I'm a totally different person, I'm a totally different fighter, and I'm confident. Before I had no confidence. I had no direction in life. I had nothing going. You know, I lost everything, so they said a double-minded man is not a stable man. Right. I'm not stable. You know, I took the fight to get away from my issues. How's everything now with your issues? You, uh, hey, you listen, okay? Man, okay is not the word, man. I'm good. I'm ready to go, man, and I can't. I got nothing to complain about, man. You know, God is good, man. Uh, the MMA game, does that give you enough time to spend with your little man? Yeah, man. He's, my little man's in the gym with me 24-7, man. You know, he's in the gym with me all day, every day, man. He loves to do it. You know, he's got gloves at home. He's got mats at home. How old is he now? Uh, he's three now. He's three now. Yeah, wow. He's, he's already doing jiu-jitsu. When he's, when he's like 14, old, uh, he's going to be a monster. Yeah, man. He when he's legal it. to fight, God forbid. Yeah, he already loves it, man. You know, and like I said, I've never forced it on him, and I never will. You know, and um, this is what he loves to do, man. So you're back in the uh, win column. You got two first round wins in a row, your last two fights. Uh, most recently, you fought Chase Owens. Uh, what did he catch you with? Was that a, uh, an elbow to the spine? Or? Yeah, he hit me with like an elbow, like a 12 to 6 elbow to the spine, man. And um, kind of like sent like this little weird shock down my spine. And, um, you know, and then uh, we get, I tell the referee, and the referee's like, what happened? I'm telling the ref, like, you know, he elbowed me. He said, oh, stop complaining in the fight. And I was like, you're not going to give me my position back, right? He said, no. You're gonna keep the standing. Wow, okay. he said stop complaining yeah, and he fight. Told me stop complaining and fight, man. That's and that crazy. Made me a little, little mad, but like I said, man, it is what it is, you know. Stop complaining and fight. Good thing he wasn't there when Christopher Reeve fell off the horse. <laughs> stop complaining and fight. All right, so uh, what happened? 15 seconds later, the fight was over. Yeah, um, he came out, which I was studying him for a while, and he threw a lazy jab. So I kind of just parried a jab and just threw a big right hand right over, and it just caught him right on the button. He went. He was out before he even um, even hit the floor. You know, the referee didn't jump in. So, you know, I went in and uh, I landed maybe eight, nine punches that were unanswered. I don't think I should even hit him, but, you know, I'm not going to sit there and allow him to get back up. Maybe when he went down, the ref told him to uh, stop complaining. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so when you clip somebody in the right spot, knowing what kind of power you have, do you kind of get a sense that this person's about to drop? No, because they do drop. Okay. You know, different people don't have different chin. Well, they, they have different chins, but when you hit someone really good with a clean shot, are you confident that anybody you hit's gonna go down? Yeah, I don't have no doubt in my mind, man. Like, if I clip you with one of these bungalows right here, you're gonna go down. You know, you're going to, you know. So I'm hearing uh, you might be on the next Matrix card in September if Jimmy Benz can put it together. No, that's my brother. I'm actually fighting for. Um, I got a big, big opportunity, man. Um, fighting for a title. August 17th for uh, Cage Fury um, in Atlantic City. I'm fighting their champ at 170, um, uh, George Sullivan. You know, another top-notch fighter. You know, he's, uh, I want to say, 13-3. and three. Wow. The elite. You know, he's, he's a tough dude. And let's clear this up, man. They talking about I called them out. Man, I ain't call you out, man. You know, I was offered to fight you maybe, uh, I want to say about a year ago. I was hurt. I couldn't fight you. You know, I was at your last fight. When, uh, when one of my guys fought Zach, he fought, so I was at your fight. They came up to me, offered me the fight, and why not take it? You know, but if you think I'm calling you out and it's gonna make you train harder, hey, be my guest, my man. You know, I'm not the type of dude that, that calls anyone out. You know, I wait my turn for everything. You know, and um, I told a promoter, you know, um, if you need me to wait my turn, I'll fight under, under you, one, two fights, and then I'll fight for the belt, whoever has it. You know, but he gave me the shot straight up, so, you know, I'm jumping all over it. What's the plans after that? Because you're eight and three. Um, if you get past George, uh, nine and three. I mean, this is a good professional record. This is UFC caliber uh, type of win-loss record. There's guys that were on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, you know, guys that are like six and two or seven and, and four. Um, eight and three is damn good. If you get past George, nine and three. You, you win a couple more, there's no reason you shouldn't be in the in, uh, UFC making a shitload of money. And, uh, you know, if you if you keep winning, who, who knows how far you can go? That's the ultimate goal, you know, get into the big show. But to the end, you know, I'm taking baby steps. You know, my next my next task is um, it's August 17th, fighting for that belt. You know, um, he has something I want. You know, I'm going to train my, my butt off, you know, win, lose, or draw. You know, I'm going to go in there and then I'm going to give him a fight, man. You know, he's going around. Talking about that I'm, I'm hearing, which I don't go by what I'm hearing. You know, it is what it is that I'm not the caliber of fighter that should be stepping in the cage with him. Well, I beg the difference, my man. We're going we, <laughs> we, we gonna, we gonna to put that to the test August 17th. Those have been famous last words. This one's not worthy enough. You know what I mean? And so, you know, like I said, I give him much respect. You know, he's coming off five straight wins. 
you know, he's on like this crazy momentum right now. You know, and um, I give him mad respect. He be some tough dudes too, man. But you know, I'm a, this is when we're gonna go back to how hard I hit. He hits hard, but he hasn't fought anyone that hits just as hard as he does. You know, and he's a stand-up guy. I'm a stand-up guy. So when you put two stand-up guys in a cage, what happens? Somebody has to not stand up. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I plan to go in there and throw him punches till one of us go down. Do you ever feel lonely when the cage door slams and it's just you, the ref, and your opponent in there? You can't feel lonely when you're doing something you love. Do you feel lonely when your wife's around you? No. Because you love her, right? I love her. Exactly. So I, I got to admit it. I love her. I love, I love <laughs> to be in there. You know, I love to be in there. So it's not lonely, man. It's just... It's, it's a weird feeling, you know, like I become, you know, I turn that button off. I turn the seek and destroy button. That's how I look. You know, my opponent is something standing in my way to get to where I need to get. You know, so you have um, your cornermen, uh, your trainers walking you down to the ring. Um, they put the Vaseline on your face. Your guys are right behind you telling you what to do, hyping you up. Uh, from the moment you get to the building and you take your little nap or whatever it is you do before your fight to when you get to that cage, you got your people with you, the, the people you you know you love and respect. And there is a moment where everybody has to just clear out and now it's all on, all on Jesus. That's why I was curious. I see the same uh, pre-fight rituals at all the events. I was just curious when they close that door, everyone backs around, you can still hear their voices but now it's just you and, and the guy in front of you. Yeah, man, like, uh, to me, man, nothing that day, I don't let nothing bother me, man. Um, all I have in my mind is my kids, my son and my, my, my two beautiful daughters. You know, just go in there and do my job, do what I gotta do, you know, and then just, my goal is to just go spend as much time with them as I can. You know, like I said, man, my opponent, I uh, respect any, per any, any, any man that gets in a cage or any woman that gets in a cage, I respect them. I'm not the one to talk trash, you know, but I don't have no pre-ritual, nothing, you know. My my thing is, you know, it's fight day, so let's just go fight, get it over with, you know, and go eat. <laughs> That's it, you know. Uh, what are some of your favorite spots to eat? Man, man, I don't, my mom's house. <laughs> your mom's house. <laughs> That's it. That's all I need, man. It's my mom's house. Man, that's why I get so big in between fights, man. My mom, man, she can cook, man. Let's talk about training. Um... I go uh, to Balance on Sundays every now and then, and uh, they got the best of the best in there. Fucking monsters. Um, there's too many people to name, but it seems like all the local pros show up at Balance on Sundays and they just beat the piss out of each other. Um, how hard are those sessions when you go down there and you're sparring with this one and then you're done with that one and another monster gets in your face, you got to spar, and then you got Ricky and uh, I don't think Phil goes down on Sundays, but uh, you got to deal with Rick and, and his ground game, his, his uh, sparring. How, how hard are those sessions and how easy do they make it when the actual fight comes around? They say, man, it's not so much hard, man. It's just knowing the level of competition there, man, that the level of competition you have at that gym, you won't get in a fight. You know, the way they push you, you won't get in a fight. You know, the way you get beat up there, you're not going to get beat up in a fight. You know, in the positions you get put in in training, and if you do get put in in a fight, it's like, come on, man. I go through this day in and day out with these training partners. You know, you like you said, man, you got the best of the best that goes there. You know, and uh, speaking of Rick, man, that dude's amazing, man. Rick is the most humblest guy that I know when it comes to training. You know, he'll go out his way to do anything you need. I can text him right now and be like, Rick, I wanna train. He'll be like, let's go. I'll text him at three in the morning, Rick, you know, I got a big fight. Yo, let's go train right now. You know, man, so he's always there and it's not about him. It's always about the fighters. What, this is how Rick talks is, what can I do for you? You know, what can I help you in? What do you wanna know? What are you having problems for? Everything is about the fighter. Everything is about the fighter, you know, anything you need, man. If he's gotta help you cut weight, he'll help you cut weight. If, man, that dude's amazing, man, you know. Since day one I met him, I met him, I wanna say maybe three years ago or so. And uh, man, he took me in with arms wide open. He's like, oh, what's up, man, you know. He took me in with arms wide open, been training with him since, man. You know, I've hung out with him, we don't go on to eat. And you know, we build a really, really strong relationship, man. When it comes to one of the best MMA coaches, man, Rick's the man. Can't, I can't, I will, I'll go to fight, I'll, I'll go to war with him for that. You know, can't no one tell me different. What's the, uh, some of the things that Rick's done that's really helped your game, that's made you, uh, you know, eight and three today? Listen, man, um, me and Rick are similar in, in a lot of ways, with, like the way we, 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 we carry ourselves, the way we outspoken, you know, and then the way we train, you know, we, 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 we go balls to the wall all the time, you know, and um, I've kind of uh, 
bit off his game. I kind of mimic him when I train because, you know, his jujitsu is phenomenal. Even his hands, a lot of people don't see great box or, 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 or spar, man. But let me tell you something, man. His all around MMA game is phenomenal, man. And, um, you know, I've, I've take, I've, I was like, I'm like a sponge around him. I soak up all his knowledge, you know, I'm always asking him questions. I'm always like, Rick, but what about this, this, this? What about this placement, you know? So when I'm there, I'm sucking up all that knowledge and I uh, mean, you know, I mimic him, you know? I kind of bootleg him. Right. That's, you know, that's how I kind of say, you know, <laughs> I go to the gym and I kind of bootleg Rick, man, you know? Cause he's an awesome dude, man. And I don't want to learn from no one, man. He's, he's the man, you know? I'm going to ask him this when he comes on the show. I'm supposed to have him on in a few weeks, but um, he's, he's never taken uh, a professional fight. I for one think, uh, with his age, he was he was on his game a couple years back. I'm not saying he's not now. He's a fucking animal now, but back that's his name. The, yeah, the animal. He's the fucking animal. But um, he would have probably fought in the UFC right along like the Matt Hughes era. I'm thinking you've trained with him. You know better than me. But I'm thinking this dude could have been not just a UFC fighter, but I mean this dude could have been the world champ. World champ ain't the word, man. That dude he would have got into MMA, man. He. he it's been sky's the limit for him, man. But you know, everyone in the sport has a different agenda. You know, for me, it was the fight. For Rick, it was just the coach. Right. You know, like all of us don't have to be fighters to be considered the best. You know, Rick is the best. You know, he's a. I, I don't want to mess this up. I, if I'm not mistaken, a three, three stripe black belt. If you look him up on YouTube, grappling tournaments everywhere. You know, he's competed at top level in jujitsu. Right. You know, Sambo tournaments, Jiu-Jitsu tournaments, top of the top, you know. Did you see his fight where he broke the uh, Sambo world champion's arm? Yeah. And um, he's, done, he's done the best of the best, man. You know, so if anyone has the, the courage to even question this man, you're nuts. You're stupid. I'm going to put it out there. You're stupid. <laughs> you know, because this man is, you know, if... If we, matter of fact, before I think it was before my last fight. You can ask him, man. We were kidding about him getting into the cage, man. And um, I told him, man, you should at least try one fight, man. He was like, you know what? I'll think about it, man. And, and you know, I constantly just, after training, I constantly just try to push it, push it, just to play around with him, you know. Right. And, um, man, I think one day he will get in there, man. I think one day he'll just give it a try, man. I think he'll give it a try one day. Uh, I, I actually asked him a while back, and he's doing so well with balance. I mean, they got so many affiliate schools, and, and they make so much money, and they do well down there. I don't think it would make sense for Rick to take a, a local MMA fight. Uh, definitely not for amateur, but uh, I mean pro. He wouldn't be making uh, what he would make in a couple days teaching jujitsu. You're absolutely right about that, you know. And um, that's another reason why I respect him, you know, because he's in there grinding with us day in and day out. Grinding. When I mean grinding, man, that dude goes in there and he prepares like he's gonna fight. You know, he pushes us to the limit. You know what he's doing? Ten five-minute rounds with Rick Tuesday and Thursdays. That's like a Bus hitting you for 10 <laughs> rounds. You know, he doesn't let up and push you. When you're tired, he goes even harder. Just to tell you, listen, no, this is not going to happen in the fight. This guy that you're fighting can't push you as hard as I can. You know, you know how many times I heard that? How many times I've gotten up when I was tired and I had nothing left in me? He motivated me. You know, and he pushed me. And, uh, man, he doesn't need to fight, man. You know, I just sit there and just, you know, just push around and play around with him, man. You know, and... Um, it's more for us. As yeah, fans. I would love this. I'm not going to lie. Rick. <laughs> I want to this see is coming from me. I would love to see you fight. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day he'll do us a favor and get in there. And, um, so you have the balance banner hanging at Martinez. Uh, is Martinez an independent school or are you guys a balance affiliate? No, we're a balance affiliate with our MMA. Like I said, Rick's our MMA coach, man. And um, since day one, he took us in with arms wide open, man. And, um, you know, I won't get that up for the world, man. And um, he actually, we were actually talking uh, two days ago. He texted me, he was like, where's my Puerto Rican brother at, man? And um, I told him, hey, I'm going to be on there next week, man. I got a big fight coming up, man. And um, and I know he's going to push me to the limit. You know, there's no doubt in that, man. You know, and then, like I said, the knowledge he has, it's amazing. Sometimes, man, I ask him a question. It might be the stupidest question. But like he said, no question is stupid, man. And uh, he pinpoints everything, man. He pinpoints every single thing, man. Uh, you also have some uh, serious heavy hitters under you and Martinez. Under your umbrella, you have uh, some of my favorite fighters. I uh, love the Dawkins brothers. Those um, my boys. Yeah. Those my boys. <laughs> Chris and Kyle, uh, they both fuck people up. Uh, Chris is actually going pro now, and um, I think it's funny. I've caught a lot of Chris's fights. Chris goes in there, and he's a big boy. So people have no clue, unless you scout at him, how quick his hands are. Yeah, his hands are fast, man. And by the time these big local heavyweights get tagged with one or two of them 
big fucking policeman punches. <laughs> like, it's a wrap. You're already shook. You're on Queer Street. And then he just finishes you off. And you're like, that's, that's he's like a fucking 250-pound Roy Jones. Yeah, man, dude. Uh, we got those. We got them, man, from, they were like green. Them dudes cannot even throw a punch. To where they're at now is amazing, man. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you know what? They're in the gym grinding, dude. Grinding. They want to get better. They, they're like sponges, man. They, they suck up any question they have. Hey, hey, Chob. Hey, Will. You know, and, um, you know, their confidence. And listen, man, they're, these kids are going to be a problem, man. Kyle is 20 years old. He's a baby. Yeah, he's a baby. You know, Chris is, uh, I want to say, 22 or 23. And he's still a baby. Four and all, he's an amateur going, turning pro in July. You know, um, yeah, man. But the, the problem is, man, these kids, they don't even have the strength that it's gonna get them to that next level yet, and we're building on that, you know? And um, yeah, they're amazing, man. These, these kids, they're, they're gonna be a problem. The Dawkins brothers are gonna be a problem, man. I got Chris coming in in a couple weeks. He's gonna share some of them cop stories, uh, getting shot at with AK-47s. And yeah, man, he was talking about that at the gym, though. Choking out dope fiends. Um, let's talk about Albert. You guys got Albert under your umbrella now. Is Albert, Albert's tough as nails. Yeah, he's like his brother, man. He's, you know, since we got him, we, we first started training with Albert at the Fight Factory when he was just a wrestler. He mm -hmm. didn't have no stand-up, no nothing. You know, and, um, you know, what sucks about Albert is, and hopefully no one takes this the wrong way because I got mad respect for him and Eddie. You know, Eddie's a world-class fighter, man, and hopefully he gets into the UFC. Um, you know, it's a lot of people, man, man, he's under the shadow, man. You know, but at the end of the day, he's his own fighter, man. And, um, you know, he, and he's starting to prove that now to people. I always see him um, sparring and training, and uh, sometimes I look at it like, this guy gets unnecessary pressure. Um, for no reason, for no reason, man, you know, because he's a young kid, he's 20 years old, 21 right. years old, man, and, uh, you know, he's trying to start his own name, man, and people don't, don't you know, don't allow him to, man, and, and not that I feel bad for him, because he's a tough kid, man, you know, it's just, people need to stop that, man, you know, people need to stop that, man, he, he's Eddie's brother, not Eddie's shadow, you right. know, and um, he knows that, man, we had a conversation before, and um. You know, and I, I told him, man, listen, dude, you're going to do your own thing and you're going to be amazing in this sport, dude. You're going to be amazing, man. You got all the talent, man, in the world, man. Just don't worry about what the next person, the next person is saying or whatever they're doing, man. Just do what you need to do. And that's it, man. So walk us through this moment. Um, you're cornering your brother. Uh, you trained with him all the way up to one of his fights. He goes out there. And just like he's done in Bellator, just like he did uh, before in events like Locked in the Cage, he goes out, he knocks somebody out completely, first round. You run into the cage, you're always the first one to pick him up. What are you thinking at that moment? How proud are you of your brother? I'm proud, man. I'm really proud of my brother, man. You know, and um, it's funny that we, we were talking about this the other day, man. Now, when we first started, in the beginning, it felt like it was competition. Like I had to outdo him, he had to outdo me. You know, and that was us just being young and just always, me and him were always competitive, man. You know when we play baseball? Oh, yeah, I'm going to come out tonight and I'm going to hit three home runs. And you struck out three times, you know, just <laughs> kind of pushing each other. You know, being competitive, man, just wanting to bring out the best in each other. You know, and um, man, now I see him in there, man, doing what he's doing, man. And um, before his first Bellator fight or his second Bellator fight, um, before I gave him a hug and I said, man, do what I couldn't do. He said, what's that? I said, I'll tell you afterwards. He said, why? I said, I'll tell you afterwards. After he won, I said, well, you did what I couldn't do. Bring that home. Bring that W home. You Three know, and zero in Bellator yeah, now. He's, he's wrecking, man. He's he's like a, he's a he, man. He's he's a wrecking ball right now, man. And I'm listen, man. I see him in there doing his thing in Bellator, man. Which you know I'm I couldn't do, you know. And it, and it amazes me, man. One of us had to do it, you know. And I'm glad he's doing it, you know. If I gotta stay on the local scene, beating people up for the next however long, then I do that. It does, I know that don't bother me, man. As long as he keeps wrecking whatever he needs to do in Bellator, man, I'm happy for it, man. You know, I'm happy for it, man. So he goes from, let's go learn some jujitsu off a guy on 5th Street to a Carlos Machado black belt man, yeah, man. and an undefeated Bellator fighter. With, with his last knockout too, man. He had a pretty good knockout his last fight, man. He's rattling people. He's yeah, ground man. and pound. There's not a whole lot of distance you can get punching someone on the ground. Apparently, he doesn't need a whole lot of distance. He's, he must he's be mad running. at me. Has he ever knocked you out? No way. He don't hit hard <laughs> enough to knock him out. Even in sparring, he never nah, clipped you? Nah, man. We got in some tough sparrings sparring uh, sessions and man nah man we never hurt each other man we've gone balls to the wall punching each other man but when's the last time you guys ever wanted to fight each other not too long ago man we always get oh really into, we always get i thought you were gonna say like 16 or nah man we always nah not fight each other because we're adults man but we always bicker here and there back and forth to each other not to the point where we're gonna throw punches and disrespect each other but man the last serious <laughs> fight we had man i want to say i was like 
14, 14 around there, man. He beat me up pretty bad. I had hickeys everywhere. Gotcha. Yeah, man. I had hickeys everywhere. But you know what, man? He beat you up for having hickeys? Yeah, I had like hickeys on my neck and on my head from him punching me. Like, come on, Will. Don't hate the player. <laughs> hate the game, but, Will. Yeah, man. We haven't fought in a really long time, man. You know, we're brothers and we're always going to agree to disagree. You know, I love him very much, man. You know? Like I said, man, we're just here to push each other. He's a little mad at me because at this last fight, it was, our fights were like two days apart. He fought Thursday and I fought Saturday. He knocked the dude out. Then I came in my fight and knocked the dude out. So he asked me, was I trying to show him up? I said, I could not <laughs> let you knock this guy out and not me knock him out. I'm the stand-up brother, remember? That was a good weekend for the Martinez brothers. Uh, yeah, man. And uh, Steve, man, we got three wins back to back. Yeah, I was just sitting Steve down McCabe after work. There. Steve McCabe went in there and put on a, a great show as well, man. I turned on Comcast and there's Steve McCabe knocking some dude senseless. So you're a, a brown belt under Carlos Machado? Yes. Brown and belt one strike under Carlos. So uh, there's there's no time frame on when you'll get that black, but what's that going to mean when you get it? Oh, uh, man, it's going to be a goal, man, that, you know, I want to accomplish. You know, that's another arsenal I have under my, under my belt, you know. Have all together maybe 15 fights, 16 fights, and then um, you know I'm a brown belt now. You know, have a school with my brother, have fighters under us. You know, man, that's just another notch. You know, under the belt. You know. Let's talk about your uh, charity. Um, you group with your church to do different things, such as uh, feeding the homeless. Can you tell us about that? Yes, man. Um, I joined In the Light Ministries about this all uh, late August, September, be a year. Where's that at? Uh, one uh, one ninety one Huntington Park. Okay, it's right actually across the street from my old high school. And um, yeah, man, um, a friend of mine was going there, and um, like I told you, man, I was going through a really, really, really bad time in my life. You know, I had no direction and um, no everything. You know, man, I was just hurting a lot of people. I hurt the woman I love. You know, um, I hurt my brother, hurt my parents. I was just hurting everybody. You know, um, like I said before on the show, a double-minded man is not a stable man. I was not stable at all. You know, I couldn't see right. I couldn't nothing, man. Everything was a blur. You know, one day I had a conversation with my brother, man, and um, he tells me, man, you're going down a dark road, man, and when your car crashes, it's going to be nobody around because you're hurting everyone you love. And he was right, man. My car crashed, you know, and I was all alone. But, you know, I walked into the church and just, man, just found the, the love that God gave me, man, and just seeing people in that church that I knew from back in the day in the streets, it was like, wow. You know, this guy's changed, and that means I can do it, you know, so, you know, um, I started doing that, man, you know, my life changed around, man, you know, I don't go out no more, I don't drink no more, you know, um, I don't do none of that stuff, man, I just stay to myself, I train hard, spend time with my kids, you know, trying to rekindle the relationships that I that, that I messed up, you know, and in time, all that will, re will be rekindled, you know, I have faith that all that will be fixed, you know, um, now trying to rekindle the relationship that I heard, that I hurt with the woman that I love as well, you know, um, we're going through our little issues, but that's fine. She knows how much I care about her, how much I love her. You know, uh, she has two beautiful daughters that are not mine, but they are mine. You know, I treat them like they're mine. My son, she she loves my son. You know, so now, you know, like I said, I've hurt a lot of people, man. And, you know, and I forgave myself for it. You want to give her a shout out? Yeah, that's my baby. I'm going to read her, baby. I love you. Okay. <laughs> and uh, she knows that. I shot her out on my last fight. She knows that. And, um, you know, like I said, we went through a tough time. You know, and um, I'm just trying to rekindle our relationship. Even, even with my brother, you know, I went through a lot through a hard time with him when I was going through that, but he never turned his back on me, you know, he, he helped me. You know, I want to thank him for that. Thank my parents for, for being there, you know, my sister. You know, everybody had a little part of that, you know, that never gave up on me, but allowed me to see what I was doing. You know, because I, at one time it was just like, I was like the horse, I had the blinders on, I was just, you know, looking straight. And your family at every fight? Yeah, man. My dad's there, my dad's in my corner. Nice. You know, my mom doesn't <laughs> love, my mom doesn't like to go, you know, she went to one of my fights, that's the car I went to fight. And I lost, you know, and I got hurt that fight. I hurt my knee and she was all spazzing out afterwards. But, you know, she supports us. She doesn't like it, but she supports us. You know, she hates that we got to go in there and punch each other or hurt someone else or someone hurts us. You know, but man, she supports us. She loves us, man. Like I said, our parents have always been there for us, man. No matter what we've done, no matter we were wrong, right, or whatever it was, you know. And, um, well, back to the church thing, you know, like I said, man, started going to church. Started interacting with some of the church members, you know, just helping me out, get back to where I need to get back to, man. I started serving at the church. I help out at the church as much as I can. We're doing these homeless outreaches. We go downtown and, and do these homeless outreaches. And um, we feed the homeless. We pray over them. You know, we ask them if they need anything. We give them clothes. We give them socks. Whatever we can help them with. You know, we do like prayer walks. We go down the hood, you know, to the streets I was in. We go down there, you know, we just talk to, 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 to guys, the kids. 
to women, to anyone that's just willing to, to hear us out. And, um, you know, just tell them our testimony, man. Look, we were here. We, we, we know what you're going through, man. You know, you don't have to do this. You choose to do this. You know what I mean? Like, it's there's always a better, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, man. You know, and um, like I said, I mean, I was going through a bad time, man. And one day I walked in, I was out the bar, I was drunk. My son comes up to me and says, Daddy, are you okay? And I just broke down crying, man. And that was the end. That was the end of it. Like, you know, I couldn't do that no more. Last time you drank? Yeah. Wow, how long ago? Long um, a couple months ago. And I'm not about that life no more. I don't need that life no more, man. Just, you know, I just want to just provide for my kids and my family as much as I can. Set that example. You know, I don't want my son to be like, oh, I want to be like my daddy. He had 13 different girlfriends. Right. You know, he was in the bar. You know, no, I don't want my son. To, no, no, no way, man. That's not the example. That's not the example that my dad set for me. So that's not the example that I want to set for my son. Absolutely. You know, my dad was always a family man. He always bust his butt to get us what we needed. You know, my dad, he was hard on us. That's one thing I can tell you about my dad, man. He was really, really hard on us. You know, but I'm glad he was that way because he made me the man that I'm becoming now. You know, I was never into drugs. I never did drugs. None, none of that stuff. You know what I mean? And um, Is your dad retired now? Yeah, my dad, he, he, he has his own little construction company. He was the one that fixed our gym. My dad fixed oh, really? our gym. Yeah, he was in there from day one. He just fixed both our gyms. You know, so our gym looks that pretty because of our dad. You know, but man, yeah, my dad, my dad was tough. And my mom, man, she's 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 the best mom in the world, man. I can't ask for nothing, nothing better than that. You know, man, I was blessed with with a great mom. You know, and um, the girl that that I'm working stuff out now, she's she's a, she's a terrific mom. You know, to her daughters, to my son. You know, I was I've been blessed with two great women in my life. You know, and like before, I wouldn't appreciate that. Right. You know, like I said, I wouldn't appreciate that. I hurt a lot of people, and um, you know, they see the difference in me. My friends see the difference in me. Everybody sees the difference, you know. And I, the only person I, the only thing I can thank God, I can thank God for that. You know, he made, he turned, he turned me. I was a mess, man, and he turned me around, man, and gave me hope, gave me faith, man. That's what I'm saying. I can go into any fight now and not worry about nothing. I got no worries, no doubt, no fear, no nothing, man. You know, I don't. I need you to uh, switch out of nice guy mode now, cause it's time to start the call out clock. 30 seconds, anybody you want to call out, any person, place, thing, the pizza man brought your pizza cold, anybody you want to call out. We want to call out Jim Wing. Jim Wing? Yeah, we're going to eat some, we're going to eat. <laughs> we're going to eat some Spanish food, my man. I remember us talking about this. So, you know, we talked about this, so I'm going to call you out. Don't take it personal, but I'm going to sit down. I think you're a terrific guy. You know, um, when I fought your son, you know, there was a lot of trash talking going back and forth. I kind of took that personal for a little bit. <laughs> But you know, I'm glad that I got to know you. You guys come down and train. I got to train with Chris. You guys are great, man. Give give, give those guys a shout out, man. You guys are great people, man. Jim Wing, Chris Wing. You know, um, yeah, man. But I would love to sit down and talk to him, man, and just eat. That's it, man. I told him how good my mom cooks. So just sit down and just eat, man, as much as we can together. And now it's time for chillax, tap, or pimp slap. Chillax, meaning you can hang out with anybody in history. Tap, meaning you apply an incredibly painful submission until you feel like letting go. And pimp slap, meaning, well, a good old 70s fly guy dolomite pimp slap square in their fucking face. Somebody I like to chill with. Yeah. I had to say George St. Pierre, man. And George St. Pierre? Yeah, man, I look up to him, man. I, you know, I'm not saying that I mimic his style, but I like how he is. You know, he's real humble. You know, he comes to fight, you know, he seems like a real terrific guy. I know people that met him this day, he's, he's great. You know, man, I like to hang out with him, man. Just pick his brain a little bit about, you know, his success, you know, and his hard training. Because, man, I know that he trains hard. Yeah, George, um, George probably isn't going to lose for a very long time. Yeah, I know, man. Unless they put him in there with Ben Askren. I got Ben Askren all so. day. <laughs> I don't think so. I like Ben, man, but I don't know. <laughs> That's a good fight, man. That's a good thing you brought up, man. That'd yeah. be a good fight, man. So, uh, who would you like to uh, tap? The animal, Rick. One day I'm gonna get you, Rick. You never tap, Rick? No, no way, man. I tapped no him way. like ten times. Man, Rick, I'm gonna get you one day, Rick. <laughs> one day I'm gonna get you, even if I gotta sneak you and jump on your back and get a rear naked choke in. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> and who gets the pimp slap? Charlie Joseph. Yeah, I'm gonna pimp slap him. Charlie Joseph, the, yeah, the, uh, the steroid. <laughs> That's the fight monkey. I like to pimp slap him from all the trash he's talked and all that cockiness and all that stuff. And when they asked him to fight me three times, he said no. I'm gonna ask him one more time. We'll make it an even four. 
I want to thank Jesus Chavo Martinez for joining us today. If you want to train with Jesus, check out Martinez BJJ, the new location. The place is huge. It's located at uh, 3511 Cotman Ave, Philadelphia, PA 19149. Or you can hit up 215-613-8360 if you want some details about coming in. Um, you can also check out MartinezBJJ.com. You have anything you'd like to plug? I uh, just want to thank all my teammates, man, and um, all the parents for believing in me and my brother. You know, my parents, everybody has something to do with the success that our, our, our school balance, uh, RCJ, Carlos Machado, you know, all everyone has a, uh, uh, a little part of where me and my brother are at, you know, and, um, you know, just, just want to thank everybody, man, for just supporting us, believing in us, you know, and giving us that little kick in the butt we need once in a while, you know, just, you know, especially my parents, you know, just them, you know, for getting us from where we were to where we at now and believing in us and just pushing us, you know? All right, I want to thank Jesus. Thanks for coming into the sit-down. Thanks for having me, man.